players look, okay, I'm in another setting, another location, I can't stop. But now what we're going to be talking about is some key factors to breaking your scoring barriers without you even touching a golf club. These are very important, they will help you follow them, break your barriers, have more fun, stop nonsense. Here we go, no nonsense. Stop comparing to the pros. You're not a pro. You're watching on television, you're thinking you're going to do the same thing. You see highlight reels of the PGA Tour and you think that's how you play golf. That's how everyone plays golf. You watch Some people watch my videos, they see me missing putts from 8 feet, 10 feet, 15 feet. We are amateurs. Go look at the statistics that pros have on the PGA Tour. Look at their make percentage from 5 feet, 8 feet, 10 feet, 15 feet. Look at the proximity to the hole after they hit a shot from a certain distance and be shocked. If I had to ask you how close a pro puts the ball from... If I had to ask you how close a pro puts the ball from like, I don't know, 150 yards, 100 yards, you'd probably say like 10 feet on average. Go look at the, go look at the stats. I'm not going to tell you the stats, but they are far greater distances than you think. So when you're hitting that shot and you're putting your pitching wedge to like 30 feet, just go compare to the pros and see when you compare to the pros, it's not as bad as you think. So don't compare to the pros on the highlights reels, okay? Go compare to the real, the real distances, the real proximity to the holes, the real make percentage, the real deal, and start to understand that what you're watching on the television is just pumped up, juiced up to make you excited. That's all. Find and play with better players. Players, if you want to get better at golf, there's no other option. Play with players better than you. If you want to break 100 and you're playing with people who shoot 105 to 120, what do you think you're going to shoot? It's the same as if you're going to hang out with a lot of divorcees, if you're going to hang out with a lot of boozers. What do you think you're going to be like the rest of your life if your five friends are boozers, divorcees, and other such glamorous things? It's the same thing. You are the sum of the five people you hang out with the most, and it's the same with the golf. You are the sum of the people you hang out with the most on the golf course. Those people, that's what you're going to play golf like. If you want to break 80, play with 80 breakers. If you want to break 90, play with 90 breakers. Most people don't care if you're not that good. If you're in a 90 to 100, anyone shooting between 85 and 90 is going to play golf with you. Make a friend. Stand guard at the entrance of your mind. This is incredibly important. Now you're listening to my video, I commend you. You're standing guard, you're allowing me in. I'm giving you the good news, okay? I'm bringing you the good news. I'm like coming to your door asking, have you heard the good news? Actually, I'm not. I'm just forcing it down your throat, but at least it is good news. This is the key. Are you listening to crap about golf? Are you listening to your friends giving you advice about golf who don't know anything? What are you watching on television? What are you watching on YouTube? Even not golf related. Be careful what you allow into your brain. What you allow into your brain will dictate how you live your life, which will dictate how you play golf. Are you watching a whole lot of political crap? Are you picking one side of an argument with another side and fighting these fantastic wars that no one cares about? Have you ever sat down and thought, where do my opinions come from? Have you ever sat down to think, where do my ideas and concepts about life and golf come from? Have you ever sat down to analyze who put those ideas in your mind? And who did you allow to come into your mind to give you those ideas? Golf, life, whatever. There's a lot of division now. There's a lot of this thing of picking one side of an argument over another. Why? To keep you divided. To keep you easily controllable. To keep you stuck. Now, what I'm saying is, make up your own mind. Stand guard at the entrance of your mind. Allow what you need to go in to aid you in your purpose, whether it's golf or life. It must aid you toward that final goal. Are you letting in a whole lot of clutter that is just fogging up your goal, your ambition? You're getting caught in these little skirmishes about this, about that, about this person, that person, that leader, that... What are you doing? These things are so inconsequential. But you have to stand guard. Somebody's talking nonsense. No, I'm not listening. Oh, I have a choice to click on that. I have a choice to read that. I have a choice to respond to that article or that headline with my emotion. You can. It's very surface level. 
just go one or two levels deep. Block out the bad, harness the good. Think about it. Does this serve me or does it do something counterintuitive, counter counteractive to what I want to achieve? Very important. Just think about it. Is this good for me? Is this a waste of time? Is this important? What's the, is this consequential or inconsequential to life and golf? Just bring it down a level. Bring it down a level. Understand form. Players, understanding form is key to golf. It's key. Eric from Impact Golf Malaysia gave me this idea because I never thought about it. He said, Matt, you've got your A game once or twice a year for a short period at a time. That's your A game where everything comes together. Enjoy it for what it is. Enjoy it for that two-week period, that three-week period when everything feels good and in place. The rest of the year, you're playing your C and more than likely your D game. And when you're playing your C and D game, it's being held together by your short game inside 120 yards. This is a professional. This is a teaching professional, an ex-coach. This is a club fitter extraordinaire. This is how it works. The only difference is when you watch a good player, they've got a lot more practice behind them. So their C and D game is easily maintainable at between 72 and 78. Their A game is 68, 69, 72. That's where the handicaps start to come down. And then you move your window to that new skill level and your bad rounds come down and your good rounds come down a little bit. But during that little bit period where they do come down below where they've ever been, it's a very short, compact period. That's why you'll see pros winning once or twice within a two, three month period. And then they disappear for the next year and a half because they're going through the cycle of A, B, C, D, E, A game. It's just a cycle. So trust, when you're having a bad time, the A game is coming. When you're having the A game, enjoy it, but don't lose sight of the fact that the C and D game is still there coming. Just work on the things that keep your frustration levels in a place where you can manage them. Because it's coming. What comes after summer? Autumn. What comes after autumn? Winter. What comes after? The sun goes down. What happens tomorrow morning? The sun comes up. Same thing with golf form. Listen for the rattle when you putt. Very key. When you have the putts inside eight feet, six feet, you'll see a video with Julian where I helped him to break 90. Again on his home course. One of the big things was, Julian, keep your head down. Wait for the rattle of the ball in the cup. Wait for that rattle of the plastic or the metal. Hit your putt. Don't look at it. Don't ever see it going in the hole from inside eight to 10 feet, six feet. Hit the putt and trust the rattle will happen. This is the number one tip I've given to many, many mid handicappers I used to play golf with on better ball competition days. So we'd play, you count your best uh, stable fit score, and I'd notice these guys are really playing nicely, 15 handicap, 14 handicap, but they're just like two putting when they don't need to. They're three putting when they don't need to. And I'd say after four holes, I'd say, hey guy, just keep your head down the whole time. You're picking great lines, but you're coming up, and you, you're getting tentative and you're missing it on the low side because you're getting anxious where the ball's going. Keep that head down forever. Your putting stroke looks good. And these guys would shoot personal bests and credit it all to this one tip. Listen for the rattle. Don't see the putt going in. Hear it going in. <sighs> Play the correct tees, player. Play the correct tees. Are you going to the golf course wanting to experience the full Pebble Beach experience? The full whatever experience at 7,000 yards, 6,900 yards, but your drive goes 190. Move up a tee. Move up a tee. Most people should be playing 5,007 to 6,200 yards. Some people come on the channel, they're like, oh, 7,000 yards is not even that much. What are you smoking, bros? What are you smoking? Because the professionals are playing at 7,000 to 7,400 yards. It's long. It's long. What is not, if 7,000 is not long, what is long? 8,000? That's not golf anymore. It's stupidity. So if you're playing from the correct tees, you get a better understanding of how the game works. You get a better chance at hitting the greens. You get a better chance at planning holes. If you're playing it too far back, it just makes everything more difficult in your mind. So you've started from the beginning on the shorter tees, and you move back, you move back, 
once you get the way of the player in your system, you actually find once it's in your system and you've accepted it, because a lot of people watch these videos and they don't implement a thing and they stay at the same level. You start at the front tee, 6,000, 5,000, 8, 6,002, and you start to understand, mm, okay, I get how it works. Set up from the whole back, set up my favorite approach shot, set up where to chip the ball so I have an easier chip. Okay, what do I hit off the tee to plan for my approach shot? Now you're starting to get the planning, the control of your decisions in your brain. You can move back, I bet you. That if I can get someone like Julian under 90 from the 6,000 yard tees, I bet after maybe 5 to 10 rounds of him playing like that, I could take him to the 6,006 and he wouldn't shoot a much higher score because of the planning. But if you're going out there with 6,600 yard tees trying to play like a professional, you're done. You're done. You have to get your ability first, then you can start moving back. But if you're going to go out there from the back and think you're going to hit bombs and put it on the green and make putts for bird all day when you're normally shooting 98, you're going to shoot a high score. Now, having said that, for the better player, longer hitter, you want to play longer tees. For me, uh, currently that new driver is going like between, on a, good, on a bad day, 288, and on a very good day, I'm averaging 299. So I don't really care what people think if they believe it or not. I have nothing to prove. But what it means is I'm hitting it long enough to play the back tees. For me to be, let's say, a scratch goal, for any scratch or any plus handicapper will tell you it's easier to play the back tees than the white tees or whatever you call your front tees at 6,000 yards. Because a 6,000 yard course may have a course and stroke rating of effectively not a par 72. The scorecard says 72, but the rating is 68 or 69. Now to play scratch golf, you have to take that scorecard of par 72 and you have to submit a score of 68, 69, 70 to play scratch golf because the rating is 69. Now, that's two, three under par on the scorecard. But if you play further back on the 7,000 to 7,400 yard tees, 6,900 yard tees, depending on the difficulty, the rating can be anything from 74 up to 76. So let's say the course rating from the back tee on the same course, 6,000 yard tees is 69 rating and the 7,000 yard tees are 75 rating because of the distance difference, that effectively means the course is now a par 75 for handicap. So if that scratch golfer wants to shoot a scratch round, he has to put up a 75 or a 76, four over par on the scorecard, which is much easier than two or three under par on the same scorecard from the further forward tees. The, the tees you play must be correct for what you're doing. If you're a higher handicap, start forward. Once you start getting comfortable, move back. Reserve the back tees for if you're a single figure handicap who hits it slightly longer way. If you're averaging 240 on your driver and under, I wouldn't move beyond the 6007, 6008 T. Trouble short, go long. Trouble long, go short. Simple topic, easy concept. Understand the handicap system, dum dum. Now I added the dum-dum because we get a lot of people commenting on the channel about the four handicap, which I am. Understand that a four handicap, an eight handicap, a 12 handicap does not mean you shoot four over, eight over, 12 over, whatever your handicap is. You take the best, you take out of your last 20 differentials, not scores, differentials. What is a differential? Differential, if I'm playing a, a par 72 course, but I'm playing from the back tees, it's a stroke rating of 74.8 and a slope rating of 138. That's, that course is no longer par 72 for handicaps. That course is now like a par 75, 76, maybe a 76. If I shoot a 78, I'm two over par effectively for the handicap system. Now that's a differential. Last 20, best eight. Just learn about it. When you're, when you're aligning a shot, players, Align the club face first, and then align your body to the club face. Stand behind the ball, pick something in front of the ball, align the club face up to that, and then set your body up parallel to that line. That's all you have to do. Don't go stand up there all together, because more often than not, your club face aimed at the target and your feet aim at the target at, a, at, a, at an angle like that. So everything's lined up like that instead of two parallel lines. 
People can say it doesn't matter where your feet are lined up, but it does because your brain knows I'm too close. What do I have to do to get back to impact? I have to come over the top and swing across it and then you hit a bigger cut, okay? Know your carry distance, not the run out. Number one thing I find is that people don't know their carry distance. They tell me, yeah, they hit their six iron 165 yards. And I'm like, dude, you just hit your six iron on a par three and went 145. Because they're taking the rollout. They're taking the rollout. Even, even B-Dog from the channel, I took him to the driving range and we, we used the, the little monitor thing that I have, the swing caddy. And he was watching his shots and he was hitting them and he was like, Nah, this thing's out by like 10, 15 yards. But it wasn't because I showed him when the ball was landing. I said, that landed next to the 150. That's your 7 iron. And he was going, no, my 7 iron goes this far. But he was taking the rollout distance. That's why a lot of people are short a lot of the time and they don't know their full carry distance. This is especially important inside 140 yards, inside a wedge distance. You want to know your carry distance. So you're not leaving yourself in bunkers in plugged lies so that you're not leaving yourself short in trouble, so that you're not hitting ego shots. Once you know your carry distance, you don't have to have ego shot anymore. You don't have to smash it. Just learn the distance the ball carries. Learn the distance the ball carries. As soon as you can get the ball airborne, this is a hobby, okay? You're supposed to suck at golf. You're supposed to suck at a hobby. You're not supposed to be great at a hobby. Otherwise, it's a profession. It's not a hobby. Just think about if your hobby was doodling, and you were drawing a doodle and your doodle didn't work out quite the way you wanted. You made a little skip with your, with your pen and you threw the pen across the room and you broke all your pencils and you slammed the, 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 the pad on the ground and you're swearing and kicked the dog because your doodle looks funny. Wouldn't you be considered a psychopath? You just got insanely furious over a doodle. That's basically what you're doing when you get angry at golf. Basically. Because... To most people, you're someone who's doodling. You're in nature, you're enjoying the scenery, you're hitting golf balls, you're not doing something that, as a profession. It's just a relaxing time. And now you're getting angry, throwing clubs, swearing, shouting, treating the caddy poorly, you know, making your partner's day feel, you know, terrible. Over a hobby, that's, if we just equate it to doodling, just imagine how ridiculous you look on the golf course, throwing your clubs, shouting, swearing, because golf is basically doodling. You're not going to doodle for a living. You're not going to play golf for a living. Why are you getting so incensed? Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? Looking into your mind? If you were out of your mind, you could look into your mind and see how ridiculous it looks. It's a hobby. You're supposed to suck a little bit at a hobby, always striving to get better, but not getting angry. Otherwise, go do something else angry. Like cycling, you have to be angry to be a cyclist. Hi girls, one more quick tip. If you're using expensive golf balls and losing two, three, four, five around at three or four dollars a pop, you're getting stressed because you're thinking about the, the ball you just lost and then you're losing another one and you're getting so fed up because you're losing dollars and dollars worth of golf balls. If you're losing more than one ball around, use cheaper golf balls, cheaper golf balls equals stress-free golf because if you're not worried about losing the ball psychologically you don't lose it when you start worrying about losing and throwing away three dollars four dollars at a time you start losing more i've played with so many guys of every skill level saying oh there goes another three dollars there goes another four dollars there goes another three dollars use cheap golf balls and the game becomes very stress-free until then players peace out stay safe pull out